All right guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week we're going to be fitting some fancy metal plates and some really small LEDs. If you look closely, you can see I've actually already done this side. We've got the lights above the middle doors fitted along with all the marker lights with their lenses. Also, on the top of the side panels, you can see the metal plates. That was all just for practice though. We've still got the other side to do. There's a fair bit more wiring in there now, but it'll all still be nicely hidden away when we get the panels on. We've probably got around 95% of the wiring complete for the rear of the truck. Plus, we have a few of the connections for the cab wiring going in too. This one runs all the extra cab lights. It's a serial interface with a nice chunky power and ground to tell the LED driver chip what to do. So, this time we're going to be working on the two top sections of the rear body concentrating mostly on the front one, as once we fitted one panel, or the LEDs, the rest is pretty much all the same. For the marker lights, I'm using yellow 0805 surface mount LEDs that have been pre-wired. Basically, all that's been done is there's a red wire soldered to the anode and a black wire to the cathode. Not at all difficult to do yourself, but they're cheap and I'm lazy. They will feed through a hole that we made in the bottom of the sides of the pockets behind the lenses. The LEDs are small enough that we're still going to be able to put the screws in and just stick the LEDs onto the screw head. Before we go too far into that though, we need to fit the metal diamond plate panels. These are instead of the dark grey stickers that come with the kit. The stickers are of course okay, but I think the proper plates are going to look a bit nicer. They're all pre-cut with screw holes, we just need to clip the little nubs to get them free of the surround, and then tidy up the edges. They're very accurately sized, the only minor problem is that they're all slightly curved. Not really a big issue though. For screws we get a pack of these extremely small self-tappers. The threads are just under 1mm in diameter, so we're going to need to get out the micro drill bits for this one. Right. We start by clipping the panels out with some side cutters with a nice sharp point. The gap between the panels and the surround is fairly tight and we don't want to bend the panel by forcing something in there. That leaves a fairly sharp bump on the edge which we can gently file down with a small fine file. The metal is fairly soft so it only takes a few passes. You know it's good enough when you can run your fingers along the sides and your skin doesn't get hung up on the rough bits. Fitting them could be interesting, because they're slightly curved, trying to keep them in place while we drill holes would be tricky at best. Usually we'd use a small clamp, but if we did, the edges where the holes are would still be sticking up. Instead, I'm going to use a couple of strips of thin double-sided tape. It's thin enough that you're never going to know it's there, but it's sticky enough it's going to hold the metal straight against the plastic, and it's going to keep it in position while we drill the holes. A couple of strips near the edges will be more than enough to do the job. We just need to very carefully line up the panel and gently press it into place. We can use the bench as a level to make sure the panel's straight. We just need to get it centred between the ridges on the plastic. Now it's not going anywhere, drilling the holes is going to be super easy. We can stick the other panel on too while we're here, so they're both ready for the drill. Before we start drilling holes, we need to find the centres. Now I found a 0.95mm bit is ideal with a quick spin between my fingers. The 1mm bit would just slightly catch on the sides, making it difficult to spin by hand. A pin vise or chuck would make life easier, especially for the 0.75mm bit we're going to be using to drill the holes. But my small one has been missing in action for a while, and the next size up is too big for the small bits. Luckily, my old wheel brace has a chuck where the segments come together tightly, so we should be able to get away with it. We'll just have to be really careful not to bend the drill bit. Needless to say, I'm going to drill the holes off camera, so I stand half a chance of not breaking anything. If you can, while you're buying the small drill bits, get a couple of pin vices at the same time. It would make things an awful lot easier. Once all the holes are drilled, it's just a case of screwing in all the screws. We need to be very gentle with them, as there's not a lot of plastic for them to thread into. With them all in, we're looking pretty good. As is often the case though, there is another problem to sort out. On the inside, the screws nearest the edge are going to interfere with the chassis. The surrounds around the boxes are a tight fit against the plastic. But we'll deal with that in a minute though. First, let's look at the LED install. 
From the outside, you can see the little LEDs on the wires poking out through all the holes. There's a fair bit of extra wire, so we can position them when the screws are in. On the inside, we can see the wires running around the outside, where they're soldered to some larger wires that run along the chassis and connect to the LED driver. The LEDs are wired as a common anode array, which means all the anodes are connected together and go to the red wire, and the cathodes are separate, with each one having its own blue wire. The wiring on all the other sections is exactly the same, just with a different LED layout. To fix the screw clearance problem, we need to remove the screws near the edge before offering up the panel to the chassis. There's a lot of wires in there now, so we need to take care not to pinch anything. Now I've tapped all the mounting holes with an M3 tap, so we can use M3 nylon screws instead of the metal ones. Mainly so we don't have to worry so much about the LEDs finding a way to short themselves out. Everything around the LEDs is going to be plastic. We need to fit a couple of the screws now to keep the panel in just the right spot. Then we can run a 0.75mm drill bit through the holes for the plates into the edge of the plastic on the chassis. We only need to go 2 or 3mm deep as there's not much of the screw sticking out. Now we remove the panel again and we can follow the holes with a 1mm bit so there's a bit of clearance for the screws. A bit convoluted but it does guarantee everything's going to fit. We just need to offer up the panel, fit all the mounting screws, and then refit the tiny screws. Then when we get to it, we'll need to run the wires along the top and connect them to the LED driver that lives just to the left of the control panel. The rear section is put together in the same way, so here it is fitted. Now before we go any further, we should test the system to make sure all the LEDs still work. Once it's ready, we can press the button on the remote for the marker lights to cycle the modes. Now the LEDs aren't facing any particular direction at the moment, so some of them are tricky to see, but they are all working, so that's good. We also have the work lights that we can cycle to test, and these are wires in exactly the same way as the yellow ones, except they're 5mm whites instead. Next, we can set the LEDs in place and fit all the lenses. First, we can tidy up the wires and push them in a fair bit so we have just enough to bend up and centre the LED. To keep it in place, I'm going to use a small ball of blue tack in the middle, then with the head of an M3 screw, gently press it in so it's nice and stuck. The fun bit is using some tweezers to centre the LED and stick it down in the middle while also passing any more excess wire back in through the hole. With it all in, we can offer up the lens and fit the two very small screws from the Tamiya kit. As usual with these tiny screws, we need to be very careful not to strip the threads. It's not easy to feel when they're all the way in. If we quickly fire it up, we can turn on the lights and see how it looks. And well, I think it looks pretty good. We haven't weakened anything by leaving screws out, and from the outside it still looks quite stock, but with working lights. Pretty much ideal. Now while we're fitting the small screws, we can fit the cover plates too. They just fit with a couple of the same small screws, and they cover up the M3 screws. Right, one last thing to do this week. We've got the covers for the lights above the middle doors. We've got the covers that are painted red and the two lenses on the parts tree. Now the lenses have some nice slots to slot into, but we're going to be gluing them in place anyway. Because the lenses are fairly small, we're going to hold them with some tweezers so we can add a couple of spots on the edge that's going to go into the cover. Then we slot in the lens and gently press it towards the bottom of the cover and carefully take away the tweezers. Fit both and then we can leave them for an hour or so to harden up. Next, I found if you fit them as is with the LEDs, you get quite a lot of light leakage around the top of the cover. After a bit of experimentation, I found that a layer of black electrical tape to make a gasket that runs along the top and down the sides works quite well. When fitted, it doesn't stop all the light, but it does stop most of it. Once the gasket's fitted, we just offer it up and thread in three more of those tiny screws. Right, now we can power it up again and see how it all looks. With the overhead lights on, they're really not easy to see, but if we turn them off, you can see a nice little glow. Now these lights are rather directional, so if I put my hand under them, you can see they're working quite nicely. Good enough in the dark, but they're not going to be visible in daylight, but that's okay. 
With the doors back on, it looks like a complete truck again, but looks can be deceiving. The rear of the truck is pretty much all there, but there's loads to do in the cab. Next time with the wrecker, we'll have a bit of a timeline jump. As mentioned before, I've been getting stuck in and not filming, as this build has taken a little bit longer than I originally planned. We'll look at all the progress and go through the working functions. Now, I'm not sure if it's going to be next week, as it would be nice to film it on the layout rather than in the studio, but we'll see how things go. Until then, as always, thanks for watching. Like if you liked, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if there's something on your mind. Bye guys!